What's up guys, this is a little mini five minute tutorial on some CG compositing techniques that I've learned over the last few years working on films like Spider-Verse, Star Wars, Avengers, and more. Though a lot of beginners doing visual effects, they don't realize that you don't just go from your CG render, you know, the lighting to the final shot in like color grading and resolve. There's actually CG compositing in between, which is an invaluable step in refining the lighting and making those really small details pop out. So this is just a few techniques. If you want to get the full class, I'm actually adding this entire project to the new beginner series, which is available in the link below. But I want to explain a few things that are useful, especially when you're working on feature film or even animated film. They, they use a specific term. And that term is called uh, first read or second read. So when you first read this image, when you first see it, and what is your immediate imp impression? And where does your eye go? So this, of course, is trained over time. But it's also sort of a subconscious thing that supervisors are often looking for. And as a senior compositor, or as you get more experience as a compositor, you're going to be able to essentially read images in this way more naturally as well. So one of the things that these supervisors and art directors are going to look for, and your job as a senior compositor to know equally as well, is to be able to see silhouettes and see where your eye is being drawn. And so when we look at this image, my first read, my first impression starts to go actually back here, back to the most high contrast thing. We also see some of this and maybe here. But what exactly is the story that we're trying to tell in this image? Remember, your eyes are going to go to the most contrasty thing or the most sharp thing. So we can, we can reduce where your eye goes by doing the opposite of those things. So if we want to draw the eye to something, what do we need to do? We need to add contrast or brightness to it. So and that is typically the case. Or the alternative would be we reduce contrast somewhere else so that, you know, that would be the case. But my other problem with this image is that the last thing that I'm kind of reading here is actually the area that we're supposed to be looking at, which, which is the, the character. And, you know, we could do a very silhouette shot where we barely see anything and he's more of a backlit thing and we want to bring out the edge. That's one style of a shot that we could do. But I didn't want to direct it in that way, I wanted to actually like read and see the face of the person. And so part of the problem here is that the silhouette is not very clear of what's going on. So if we look at this, essentially the gun and the face are almost blending together. So what we want to do to increase contrast, which is to draw the eye in, is we're going to take one of the light groups. And the light group is a little bit different than an AOV. And we're going to bring it up. So a light group, I'll just say LG. A little bit different than AOVs. AOVs, as we know, are the passes, all the passes, reflection, specular diffuse, et cetera, et cetera. We already know what AOVs are. Light groups are combinations of those things, but really all you can think of it as is there's an orange light group for the orange light here. So this would be like one light group, light group. and then there would be another light group for this greenish blue uh, light on the left side. So those are the two light groups that we can control. Sometimes when you're controlling light groups, it can conflict a little bit with AOVs. The math won't add up exactly the same because maybe they were denoised slightly separately. So what I'm trying to say there is sometimes you'll just do light groups or sometimes you'll use AOVs. But sometimes you're not going to be doing both because they'll conflict with each other. So in this comp, I wanted to just use the light groups rather than breaking into every layer because, you know, the lighting is pretty good here and we have like most information that we need. So... Uh, that is one thing to consider. So what do we want to do? I'm going to use the light group to increase the contrast on the face. So I'm going to bring up the orange light, but we want to bring up the orange light everywhere. I don't want to just make it brighter. Really what I want to do is create readable silhouettes and add contrast. So I want to create a silhouette on this gun. I want to basically see the edge of the gun, which I can't because it's too dark. And we're going to do that by actually just brightening up this area right here. So we're just going to brighten up just behind and we can use a 3D position mat tracked onto the face to basically bring that up. And once that's done, this area will be brighter. So literally we're just brightening the face and cutting it out away from the gun. Pretty simple. Now, so other things we could do, we could also bring up maybe the tip of the gun. That would be kind of cool. We could bring up the specs like here because we kind of want to, maybe that would be like another contrast point we want to draw the viewer. So we could just like, you know, if there's two points of contrast, maybe that's a bit brighter and then this is a bit brighter. So we're, we're kind of, you know, if the person's eyes are moving on this image, we're going to look in this direction. We want to use the, the perspective of the gun as sort of a, a tool to drive the eye towards the viewer. 
and the the camera is also pushing in towards the shot so that this very linear line as well is going to help us uh sort of draw everything in and th because this is out of focus and this is sharper your eye is going to want to go away from the out of focus thing in this direction but it would be still nice to see a little bit of that breaking against the edge of uh the background and you know yeah we're not seeing much of that right now like i'm not even reading the edge of this gun so we could you know add it, either relight it or just bring up the tip here which is pretty much what i did in the actual comp. so let's just take a look here at the actual comp so if we just go to and these are very small adjustments by the way they're not like massive adjustments so that's the the tweaks we're just bringing up those little areas bringing up this and bringing up that but keeping the gun relatively the same we could also bring up this, the reflections out of the side of the gun if we wanted just like a tiny bit here uh, the other thing I did was I also just targeted the sunglasses and brought that up a tiny bit. I wanted to actually keep the, uh, bring up this eye light slightly. So I put the reflection of the light, I put the light very specifically in the scene so it would reflect here and looks similar to an eye light. So on animated films actually, especially, they spend a lot of time always trying to get a spec in the eyes. And even though we have sunglasses, we can still read that. It's going to read a bit better as eyes and sunglasses versus just being a black uh, thing. So that's more of a lighting thing, but compositors have to understand lighting pretty much equally as well uh, because we need to refine it to the final lighting that's what compositors are literally doing so those are a few things we can do and now we can talk about specifically how we're going to do it using some position data or we can track on some rotos and things like that